Once Yura makes a lap around town, she goes back to Margaret's house to pick up a new pet clay to walk. While I could take around with her for another lap, I decided to go back home instead. I can't even bring myself to watch her walk away. It's just so frustrating, I can't watch. If I did, I'm sure I'd start plotting ways to physically persuade that elderly woman. I know. If I happened to change my mind before I got to my destination, I could always choose to go to Pacifica or Anya for advice. But then again, after all the work those two did to help us out, Yoru found a live-in job by herself, and I lost my reason to look for work. I don't know what sort of face I should put on when I report back to them, but I do know that I need to report to them soon. And with that thought in mind, I gaze at the missile as I cross through the plaza. Ah. A familiar girl drops a cardboard box, which makes that distinct plump characteristic to cardboard. She looks this way, not at me, but through me, as if looking into the past. She is afraid. Even someone as dense as me can tell that. Her name's Clara. The nun who got that impressive collection of bullet holes when I used her as my substitute. The nun who called me a poop head just before she got that impressive collection of bullet holes. I felt we had reached a mutual understanding for that short moment. But I don't think that's quite right. Um, there's this, this, something I've been meaning to say. Clara desperately stammers. Paper flowers spill out of the cardboard box at her feet. Wait, she's not even officially a nun, is she? Then what exactly does she do? What's her role? What's her source of income? Ever since I started looking for work, I've been thinking these questions about everyone I run into. What is it? I decide to reply for now. Honestly, it'd make me feel a little better if she were to say something like, It's my turn to murder you, so you best be prepared. I'm sorry. Uh, huh? That's not what I was expecting her to say at all, so I find myself at a loss for words. I did some thinking after everything that happened, like what I did wrong to make you so mad. Clara starts talking with tears in her eyes. It's not your fault. I must have done something wrong. So I'm sorry. I have no idea what to think. I haven't even thought about thinking. It's like I'm just churning out cookie-cutter answers. I don't blame you for what you've done, so please don't worry about it. How can she be so self-sacrificial? How could her heart be so pure? Is that what she wants me to think? <laughs> don't make me smack you. But let's talk things out with words instead of violence this time. Please come visit the church. We have tea and yummy sweets. You can make friends, laugh, have fun. The ideal girl speaks of her ideals with an idyllic look on her face. Give me a break. None of that stuff is what I need. My boundless rage actually calms me down. It also gives me a sudden flash of inspiration. My thoughts freeze over and become clear, like ice free of any impurities. You're right, Clara. I'm sorry about what I did earlier. Oh. I hug Clara. Her body stiffens for the first few seconds, but she relaxes soon enough. Clara smells... Clara is small and smells like a sweet-scented candle you'd buy at a cozy general store. For now, I wipe the snow off my hands on the back of her coat. I'm so relieved to hear you say that. Let's be friends from now on. I act out the cookie-cutter answer she wants to hear. It's as if there is no Sayako nor Clara here. It's as if we're just actors acting out an ideal script in the center of the plaza. I'm so, so happy. My love finally got through to you, right? Yes, that's right, Clara. By the way, I'm in a bit of trouble now, you see. Oh, I can help. I thank her and let go, ending our embrace. The sweet smell fades into the distance, giving my lungs a bit of relief. You see... I place a hand on Clara's shoulder and give her the most troubled look I can muster. I peer into her pale eyes and establish firm eye contact. My role here is a pitiful person in need of help, and your role is someone who can give me that help. You understand? It's about money, you see. Money? I give her a truthful summary about the current state of affairs. I make sure to highlight how Yoru's been unfairly treated like a slave at her job. 
and I don't forget to mention how she's being subjected to casual violence. I firmly emphasize those two points. No way! Poor Yoru! So I want you to help Yoru pay her debts, but it's too large of a sum for me alone. I put more force into my grip on her shoulder. I try, but fail to cry on command. It was worth a shot, though. So help me pay for half so we can reclaim Yoru's freedom. I think I pulled it off? Huh? You're my only hope. I squeeze out the most pitiful voice I can muster. I need you. Keep going. You're the only one I can talk to. More. S-sister. Now for the finishing touch. Let's work together for the first time. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> too easy. I do feel sorry for her. But any time spent wondering about how she feels is time wasted. What good can come out of that anyway? You wouldn't wonder about how the numbers you type into a spreadsheet feel. Same thing. Oh my god. I will try. How much money do I need to bring? Okay, first, don't be alarmed when I tell you the amount. I tell her half of the necessary amount. Times two. In other words, the full amount. Reducing the amount of work I have to do to zero. She's so bad. It's not that I don't want to work, it's just that it feels right for Clara to pay up that much. I'm sure if I told Pacifica and Anya about it... Nice, but I'd be even ni Nice, but it'd be even nicer if you doubled the amount. You're a friend I can be proud of. Oh my god. Yup, that's what Pacifica and Anya in my mind are saying. Is this a malicious scam? Perhaps. But Clara must think she's reformed me, and that I trust her enough to share my concerns with her. And that's what the ideal response that an ideal girl should make? I'm sure you know what you must do, Clara. I, I understand. Also, don't tell anyone else. This is for your ears only. It's our little secret. But wouldn't it be better to get a lot of people to help? We can't. Listen, if you betray me, oh my god, I might get violent again, like last time. I think I feel Clara's shoulders stiffen when she hears the words last time. She hasn't forgotten the terror. I think it's far easier to forget things like love and happiness than it is to forget terror. Oh my god, our character is so bad. Terror dulls your decision-making skills, and Clara's already dull as it is, which I guess is why I'm able to handle her so easily. But I don't have that much money. We really should get more people to help. Don't say a word to anyone. I shoot a piercing gaze through Clara's big, bewildered eyes. But I've never seen that much money. Oh. Clara? No, it's nothing. That money is off limits. I hug Clara as... I hug Clara tight as she murmurs those words, just like Pacifica once did. I then whisper in her ear. Say, Clara? We're friends, aren't we? We've forgiven each other. We're almost the same age. We're true friends forever, aren't we? I randomly say whatever words might make Clara happy as I'm trying to find a specific website on a search engine. Oh my god. We sure are. Clara's body trembles slightly. I don't know if it's what I said or if my breath simply tickled her ear. Either way, it doesn't matter. Once this whole incident is over, Let's plan out all the things we can do together. Clara starts squirming more and more in my embrace. Just think of all the things we can do. I can't wait for us to plan everything out, together of course. Just the two of us in my room, a uh, sleepover. We'll be together until morning. And so, and even so, I neither strengthen nor loosen my grasp on her, as if the embrace were completely natural. Oh, I, I... I wonder what you'll sound like as you snooze in my arms. 
Clara twitches, squirms, and then stops resisting. The priest has money saved up for everyone in case of an emergency. That's sure to be enough, and I... Go on. I'm in charge of looking at that money every once in a while. If I don't, it'll disappear, like all the other stuff here, so... Clara? The next time I have to look at the money, I can bring it out. Thank you. I feel bad for the priest, but this is surely a good use of the money, right? God will surely forgive me, right? I'm sure he will. I'll pray that he forgives you, too. Uh, okay. Okay, see you later, then. Let's regroup at my place when we've got the money. Okay. I'm getting tired, so I'm gonna go home and sleep. Good night. Good night. That conversation was 99% lies, but that last part was true. I really am tired. Oh my... Not out of guilt or anything. I'm just tired from all this concentrating. Jeez. Once I manage to get back home, I toss myself onto bed and go to sleep with my coat still on. I feel sleepier than the night I got back from that movie theater on the hill. Sleepier than the night I finally got a potential job offer from a company and informed the university. Sleepier than the morning after I dragged two friends' corpses through the snow back to town. Sleepier than the morning after I committed a massacre in the church. Wait, did I do all those things? No, that wasn't me. Must have been things I've heard from someone else that I've mistaken for my own memories. Right, that's gotta be it. Anyway, I think I'm far sleepier now than I was for any of those various events. Oh my god, our character's a mess. <laughs> when the doorbell rings, the three of us packed into my room. Get excited. Pacifica, the pizza's here. It took them longer than 15 minutes, so they gotta give it to us for free. Yeah, yeah, so, Sayako? On it. The two of them hide behind the bed where they can't be seen from the door. I shoot them a glance and open the door. Here it is! Clara's standing there with a glimmer in her eyes. They're glimmering a little too much, actually. It's not like her. I guess her body must be all riled up from the naughtiness of betraying her people. I'm pretty sure adrenaline or whatever would do that to you. That's a, There's a big travel bag by Clara's feet. Really? Wow, let's see it so I can count. With difficulty, Clara picks up the heavy bag and hands it to me. So have we come to understand each other? Are we friends now? I suppose you could say that, but you must be tired, so go home and get a good day's sleep. Um, this is your home, right? I don't have any other plans today, so, um... Clara's eyes moisten slightly as if she's expecting something. Several somethings, even. Sorry, but I can't live up to those expectations. Oh, uh, I see. Um, should we go hand over the money together? Clara looks at me with upturned eyes as she tries to read my facial expression. The elderly man, the elderly woman, Mr. Patel, and just about every other town's ghost is a little bit lonely. Even with her social position in her community, Clara's no exception. That said, I guess it would be kind of ironic for a ghost to live a fulfilling life with lots of friends. Oh, I think that's a good idea. But, well, we ninjas work alone, you know. Maybe next time. Good night. Well, whatever. There's no point pitying someone you barely know, right? For just a moment, I think about what'll happen to her standing now that she's handed over her community's money to the enemy. She might lose her position as everyone's beloved nun in training. Oh, well. I think about it for just a moment. And then I shut the door. I hear cheering from behind me. Oh my god, they're all horrible. That was some real rock and roll stuff there. You totally broke her spirit. I give you 10,000 out of 100 points. That's a thousand times more than the maximum score, Teach. Ah, it's a hundred times more, you absolute poophead. Was that okay? That was an absolute garbage move, I'd say. But it's Clara we're talking about, so... 
Exactly. Sorry, not sorry. Yep. Ha ha ha. I needed to muster up a lot of courage to open up to Pacific and Nani about this whole thing, but they accept my decision without judging me. After strengthening our bond over our shared malice towards Clara, we're in a completely celebratory mood. It's a total victory for the type of women who love seeing cute girls loved by everyone fall flat on their faces. Oh my god, this is so bad. Thanks, you two. Don't mention it. All we did was watch. It's probably been about a month. Calendars don't exist in this town. I don't know if it's because of that, but the very concept of time is ambiguous in this town. We all pretty much decide things with relative terms like today, tomorrow, tomorrow's tomorrow, and tomorrow's tomorrow's tomorrow, and so forth, I suppose. But it seems that even in a town like this, the concepts of past and future vaguely exist. However vague time may be, it definitely took time for Clara to go gather the money, and for the three of us to get together again like this. And using that time to walk around inanimate pet clays isn't a good way to spend it. I'm sure that girl would be much happier to live her time freely. Alrighty then, time to go slam that cash in that old hag's face. I've got to get back to work, though. You better. I'm still waiting on those goods. I know, just give me a bit more time. 